Good morning, world. Hello, everyone, everywhere. Pastor Robert Thibodeau here with another session of study and prayer for today, which is January 16th. Our scripture reading for today is from Ezra chapter 9, verse 6. Ezra prayed, I'm too ashamed and disgraced, my God, to lift my face to you because our sins are higher than our heads and our guilt has reached to the heavens. Let's go to the Lord with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, as Ezra prayed, so we pray today that our sins in this nation have reached all the way to heaven. We are so unworthy of your blessing, so deserving of your judgment, but for your grace and your mercy, we are still here. We pray, Father, that, that our spiritual eyes would be opened and that we would turn from our wicked ways and seek your face. To you, Father, we give honor, glory, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Let me ask you this question. Are you ashamed of your country? Ezra had been working hard to, to teach God's people how to obey God, how to worship God, but the people did not listen. They continued to go about their own business, not paying attention to the teachings of God or the preaching of the prophets. They basically forsook the biblical way of doing things and had turned their backs as a nation on God. This, this brings about judgment, folks. You've heard me say that the United States has opened the door to divine judgment by embracing lifestyles and ways of life and attitudes that, that dishonor God, dishonor our godly heritage. And we have nobody to blame for what's going to happen except for ourselves. If we do not repent and do so quickly, it will be too late. Ezra found out about lots and lots of people who were choosing to disobey God as well. He was, he was basically hurt. What does Ezra do? He prays. Ezra begins his prayer by saying to God that he was too ashamed and humiliated to even lift his face towards heaven. He declared, our iniquities have risen higher than our heads. Our guilt has gone all the way up to the heavens. Here, right from the beginning of his prayer, Ezra was pouring his heart out to God, telling him exactly how he felt. And it's interesting that throughout the prayer, even though he had not participated in the sins of the people, he demonstrated by using the words we, our, and us, that he identified with their sins and even felt the guilt of their sins. This is how it is for us in the world today. Even though as Christians you may not have participated in abortions or homosexuality or supporting a particular political party that encourages such actions, you're still here. You're still part of this nation. And this nation is so deserving of judgment. Here, this nation that's starting to experience these judgments already. Ezra goes on in his prayer saying all the great things God has done for the nation. He was not doing this to remind God of these things, but to bring to remembrance what God had done to the minds of the people all around him. Then in verse 10, Ezra says to God, what should we say after this? So here is Pastor Bob paraphrasing now. He's praying, now that we've done for all, all that you've given to us, all your kindness and your blessing upon this land, what have we done? We've turned our backs on you and forsaken your covenant. You told us not to do these wicked things, but we as a nation have done them anyway. Folks, this prayer should be prayed by believers everywhere right now. We, we may not have been participating in the wickedness of the sins of this nation, but we permitted them to be practiced anyway. Well, how do we do that, Brother Bob? By electing public officials who supported, endorsed, passed, embraced laws that went contrary to God's word and God's will, and then punished anyone who spoke out with God's word against those wicked practices. We see this happening today. Cancel cultures all around us. Closing his prayer, Ezra said in great humility, here we stand before you in our guilt, though no one can stand before you because of this. Ezra was basically putting it all on the line. He told God, basically, your judgment is what we deserve. We do not deserve your mercy any longer. And it was true then, and it is true now. But this prayer got the attention of those around Ezra, and repentance began, and judgment was averted. God heard Ezra's prayer and granted mercy. What do we deserve as a nation or as a world today? 
I can tell you in one word, judgment. But God is only because of his mercy that we're still breathing air today. But God, it's time to repent for you, where you have sinned against God. It's time for you to pray like Ezra prayed. It maybe, just maybe you can influence those around you to repent as well. Then and only then will the impending judgment that's coming on America right now, the, the preludes to it are, are already showing its face. Maybe, just maybe, the impending judgment can be delayed. Let's pray for you to be able to influence others, to repent of their sins, receive Jesus as their Savior. It does not matter what you have done or what others have done. If true, true repentance comes in Jesus' name, it doesn't matter. Become born again, receive the gift of everlasting life. Then if judgment does come, it doesn't matter to you because you've already received mercy. Amen? Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for this nation, for the world, wherever someone is listening or watching this video right now, we thank you, Jesus, that your sin, you took our sin upon you on that cross, bore our sin so we don't have to. But Jesus, we pray for this world that we live in right now. There are so many people deserving of judgment, deserving of hell. This world has been judged already. And we see the judgment taking effect. Lord Jesus, our prayer is that we would be able to influence one who will then influence one, who will then influence one. And soon, this world would be serving you again. Lord Jesus, we pray for those listening to within the sound of my voice right now that they'd join me in collective prayer, praying for the repentance of sin in this world, that this whole world would bow their knees at the name of Jesus. But Lord, if judgment is coming, which I believe it is, we thank you in advance that for the promise that your people called by your name would be spared from this judgment. Father, we give to you honor, glory, and praise for all that you do, all that you've done. And Father, we thank you that you are our Heavenly Father. And we pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Do me a favor, leave a comment rating down below and, and share this out on social media far and wide. Someone somewhere needs to hear this this day. And be sure to visit our website, podcastforchrist.com. Take a look around there. Download those free resources. Till next time, as Pastor Bob remind you again, 1 Thessalonians 5.17 Living Bible says to always keep on praying. Be blessed, folks. Talk again tomorrow.